Hello everyone, welcome to my political journalism news channel. The story for today is in an era of fake news, and in a time where social media is the primary source of information for many, mainstream media has sometimes been written off as anachronistic and irrelevant. But if that's your view, you might want to pay close attention to an extraordinary series of text messages made public in the federal court this week between WA Premier Mark McGowan and Kerry Stokes, proprietor of the West Australian newspaper and the 7TV network, during defamation proceedings between McGowan and mining magnate Clive Palmer in Sydney. In the texts, which both parties must have never imagined would be made public, McGowan tips off Stokes that legislation is about to be introduced into Parliament aimed at stopping billionaire businessman Clive Palmer from suing the government for damages over a stalled mining venture. The unprecedented legislation was introduced by Attorney General John Quigley into the chamber at 5 p.m. on a wintry August afternoon in 2020, and McGowan had texted Stokes about it a minute earlier, at 4.59 p.m. Shrouded in secrecy, McGowan's own cabinet colleagues only found out about the legislation about an hour before it was tabled, so Stokes was among the first to know about it. In the days following the legislation's introduction, Palmer was depicted on the front page of the West as a cane toad, a mosquito and as Dr. Evil, the cunning criminal mastermind of the Austin Powers movies. I appreciate the support enormously. A revealing text message conversation aired in the court this week showed the level of mutual backslapping going on between Stokes and the Premier at the time. Mark, well done. I think no one else could have achieved the legislation in the speed you did. People are with you. Kerry, Stokes texted McGowan as the law passed Parliament. McGowan was equally gushing about the paper's coverage, joking with Stokes about the depictions of Palmer. Thanks Kerry I was asked about those marvelous front pages today, and I said, I think the West has gone a bit soft. I appreciate the support enormously, all the mealy-mouthed tut-tutting by some people about Palmer's rights makes me sick. Political analyst Peter Kennedy said what was remarkable about the texts was the level of coziness and informality on display. I think it's probably wise for premiers to have a working relationship with proprietors, but to keep their distance, to keep it formal, he said. It would be unwise for anyone in politics to think that friendship will get him through any circumstance. The media's role under the microscope, as the fourth estate, the relationship between the media and the government has always been a complicated one. Often viewed as a crucial pillar of democracy, holding politicians to account, the media can also be a powerful propaganda tool, just ask Vladimir Putin or Donald Trump. Kevin Rudd and Malcolm Turnbull are in no doubt about the continued, and in their view toxic, relationship between politics and some sections of the media, specifically the News Corp empire. The former PMs have been campaigning for a royal commission into what they see as disproportionate influence and the lack of media diversity, with Rudd calling news owner Rupert Murdoch an arrogant cancer on our democracy. Turnbull wrote in The Guardian that News Corp does not operate like a conventional news organization but rather like a political party, pushing its own agendas, running vendettas against its critics and covering up for its friends. Stokes' media empire is much more modest than Murdoch's, especially since he sold his interests in Foxtel and Sky, but he remains the chairman of Seven West Media, whose stable includes was only daily newspaper and its associated websites as well as the 7TV network. Kennedy said Murdoch can only dream of the dominance that Stokes has here, in WA, encompassing the most popular TV channel as well as the only daily metropolitan newspaper. Where a media organisation has such a monopoly as Stokes does in Perth, in Western Australia, there could be cause for concern, he said. Political leaders must be at pains to avoid being seen to be dancing to the media proprietor's tune. They need to be at pains to be independent, because they're not there to please the media proprietor, they're there to govern in the interests of the state, and sometimes those things are not the same. Paper turns on Mark McGowan. Since the texts between the Premier and the media mogul were exchanged, McGowan's relationship with the West Australian has suffered a dizzying about face, with the tabloid abruptly turning on State Daddy after he changed his mind about opening the WA borders on February 5. No longer depicted as was saviour, the newspaper instead slammed McGowan's handling of Omicron, and after weeks of highly critical coverage, the Premier eventually opened the border last week. We may never know what, if any, influence the West's negative campaigning had on McGowan's decision, but it would seem likely the dramatic switch to hard-line criticism would have stunned. At the same time, polls published by the newspaper showed McGowan's popularity slipping from an astonishing 91% in September 2020, to 64% last month, still a figure most MPs would be deliriously happy with. 
The publication of the texts has given a rare insight into the way politicians engage with the media, and on what terms. Given the water that has gushed under the bridge in the intervening 18 months, it would be interesting to see what sort of texts, if any, that the Premier has been exchanging with Stokes in the last fortnight. The defamation case between Palmer and McGowan is set to resume later this month, with final submissions expected in April. That is all for today news. Thank you for watching to my channel. Please be sure to leave your comment and subscribe below for more news update.